Good morning, everyone. This is Isabel Lira with the Miami Science Museum. I'm here to introduce Leland Melvin, Associate Administrator for Education at NASA Headquarters. Leland, thank you for being here today. And also, I want to thank Daniel for helping with all the preparations for this big event. We've really been looking forward to hearing from you. Isabel, thank you for putting this all together. This is my first time in, in Second Life, and I, I feel, it's, feel like it's my first life. I'd like to take a moment to introduce all our youth programs. We have three groups joining us today, and they're all in different locations. Digital Wave is joining us from Miami-Dade Community College. Well, hello, this is Ted Myers uh, from the Museum of Science, and we are at Miami-Dade College, uh, North okay. Campus. Upward Bound is at our space gallery. So we have, we have high school students here from all around Miami-Dade County um, who come to a regular youth program. Say hello, everyone. <laughs> we love the dance. <laughs> I'm trying to work it. <laughs> Youth Expo is joining us from the Miami Science Museum Computer Lab. Welcome everyone and let's get started. Okay, hello everyone. How's everyone doing today? Good. Okay, well I'm, I'm very honored to be here to talk to you about some of the experiences that I've had in space and just where we're going with education, but when I think about you know, this opportunity to be in this virtual world right here and then having, you know, to, to contrast this with being in a in a an actual space environment. I didn't go and I do any spacewalks like some of my EVA suit guys here in Second Life. But, you know, I, I think about what an honor it is to just be able to talk to you and think about that you guys are our future. You know, all of you in here that are floating in space right now, if you, you know, if you're diligent, if you persist, if you're, you know, persevere, that you can do anything you put your mind to. And when I was a, you know, student, young kid, I never imagined in my wildest dreams that I could, you know, actually be in space. And so I want to show you some uh, pictures. I've got a little presentation I want to show you. So if everyone, I don't know how this works, but if uh, Amy can queue up the slides. Yeah. Oh, there they are. Triangles up at the top give you control. So control of the slides. Sweet. This is too cool, guys. <laughs> all right. Can you all see the uh, the slides? Living your dreams? We yes. Just fine. Thank you. Okay. There we are. Oh, I've got to go to flying. Okay, I'm just learning the controls, everyone, so uh, bear with me here. Here we go. Here we go. Also trying to find out people that are doing what you think you want to do. To, and to get their stories, because it's really all about the stories. It's all about their path to getting there. And if you can find that person or, or that group of people, you know, you don't have to mirror their their path. You find your own path, but maybe you use influences from them. So, you know, I, I went to college on a, on a football scholarship to University of Richmond. I was a chemistry major there. I studied chemistry and um, ended up going to graduate school. But before that, I went to the Detroit Lions in the NFL. So, so the Detroit Lions did that, uh, pulled a hamstring and training camp, bounced around with the Lions and the Cowboys, and, and then realized I needed to get a real job. When I worked at NASA Langley Research Center for about 10 years, and a friend of mine said, Leland, you'd be a great astronaut. So the first flight was in 2008. It was the um, STS-122. That first flight, Peggy Whitson invited us over to dinner. She said, you guys bring the rehydrated vegetables and we'll have the meat. And we float over there with our, you know, rehydrated green beans and corn. And we're sitting there and, you know, Sade is, I think, smooth operators playing on the iPod through the speakers. And we're traveling around the planet at 17,500 miles per hour you know, looking down on the earth, having a sunrise and a sunset every 45 minutes. And I'm going to tell you, that was the most fantastic thing. All the training that we had done, all the hardware, all these pieces, parts that we're assembling on the space station, they paled in comparison 
to breaking bread with people from around the world in that in that van at that vantage point. And I think you know you guys are going to be the ones that have to really help bridge the gap and and make this world a better place. You know, one of you floating around here in space right now, maybe walking on the Martian surface, or you know, figuring out a way to to keep our planet safe, or building the next rocket to get us to, to Mars or beyond. Uh, Leland, do we have a question here? Um, how did you feel about NASA launching its last launch independently? Good question. So it's it's just, you know it's a I have a have mixed feelings, but I think the main thing is that we have to continue to explore past low Earth orbit, past the moon, and maybe Mars one day. And the only way to do that, there's not enough money to keep all of these things around. So we depend on you know our commercial partners, depend on our Russian our Russian colleagues, and try to get the funding to to go further. Good question. Thank you. You're welcome. Has an incident ever occurred that made you want to change your mind about being an astronaut? That's a, good a very good question. Um, you know, after the Columbia accident, you know, momentarily I paused and said, you know, what are we doing? What is this? You know, my all my friends have, have perished. They gave their lives for, you know, they were doing all medical type research in space. Um, but as soon as I got to David's father's home in Washington, Virginia, and you know, with tears in his eyes, he looked me in my he looked me straight in the face and he said, Leland, we must continue to find space. We've got to carry on their legacy. You know, the night of the accident, that's what his father's telling me. He's not saying, NASA killed my son, you know, you know, hate you guys, anything like that. He's saying we must continue to carry on their legacy. Never let anyone even if it's your own family, never let anyone tell you, or if they tell it to you, you know, just say, okay, I hear you, but, but don't let that deter your dreams. Don't let that keep you from, from, from living your dreams, because there are so many people that will try to do that, and some of it's because they don't want you to succeed. There's so many reasons why, but, but just make sure that if you have a desire to do something, don't let someone take that desire away. Leland, we want to thank you very much for coming here today and sharing uh, all your experiences with us. Our students, I know, have been deeply moved by your accounts of, of um, getting to where you are today and all those wonderful people that um, dedicated their lives to, to getting there. Isabel, I really appreciate what you've done at the Science Museum and Mary Sladek and everyone for helping set this up. I was not a Second Life member until now and ready to get my Second Life on. And uh, I just really appreciate all the students out there. You know, you guys are our future. Start stepping up and, and, and knowing that you are the future of our, our world, our, of, our, of our, our nation and our world. And whatever that we can do for you to help you get to where you need to go is, um, you know, is, is why we're here. So, um I really appreciate you, and thanks for thanks for coming and hanging out in space with me. And uh, thank everyone else for, and I also want to thank Dave for being so helpful and supportive here, um, and Amy and Isabel and everyone else. So, uh, and Carol, looking for sending the uh, the slides. So thanks everyone, and have a great day. Have fun. <laughs>